Welcome to the GCN Tech Show and finally we've made it back to GCN Megabase. Ollie is away this week and he's away filming some mega cool factory tours, so the Bike Vault Queen is back. Oh, coming up this week we're going to take a closer look at some new bikes from Vast, eco-friendly saddles, new gravel bike tyres, wearable tech and even some carbon disc brake rotors. And we thought it was about time we take a look back at some of the best tech from the 90s. What a decade. First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. So this isn't specifically from the show last week, although I just created the poll because uh, I want to hear people's thoughts on it. Yeah. So I asked, do you think electric bikes and vehicles are a good replacement for the internal combustion engine? The viewers have voted. Manon, what have they voted for? Well, 77% of them said yes and 23% said no. It's interesting, isn't it? I, I think yes. Yeah, so yeah. I agree. I think electric vehicles are the way forward, but Definitely. there was quite a sort of, um, it's quite a divisive subject. So there was lots mm. of people saying that they weren't. Um, so let's head on to our main talking point. So with Ollie being away, we got free reign to pretty much talk about whatever we wanted. So we thought, let's take a look at some of the tech from the 90s. That'd be good or bad. Plus, Ollie wasn't even born in the 90s, so he wouldn't know. But yeah. Just about edging in. The yeah, 90s, I was ju just, just in the 1990s, that needs to be fat. So I'll kick us off with road bike suspension forks. Mm. Mm. It was only last week at the IAA show when I saw the new RockShock Rudy gravel fork, which Sai's also taken a closer look at. But would you believe it? It was back in the early 90s when riders started experimenting with suspension on their road bikes. Yeah, it was actually in 1991 that Greg LeMond raced to Paris Bay with suspension on his forks, and appropriately, they were called the RockShock Paris Bay Road SL, which weighed just over one kilo. Oh, amazed you remember the name of that. Good work. So these featured, <laughs> to, these featured a titanium steerer tube, polished magnesium lowers, and then it had six clicks of adjustment on the compression. And also, I've got a cool fact for you. Do you want to hear this? Go on. Um, so RockShock shipped over 45 pairs of these suspension forks in two suitcases over to France just a couple of days before the race. But it wasn't until 1993, so two years later, that someone rode that suspension fork to victory, and then they subsequently released them available to the public. When I was a kid, just a couple of years ago, these were the wheels that I wanted on my bike. The Spinergy Rev-X. They're basically eight huge carbon blades which make, make the wheel, and they are super cool. And it was a real iconic wheel from the 90s. In fact, I think they were first introduced in 1990. Incidentally, the same year I was born, so that's two real standout moments within cycling history, that, isn't it? Uh, yeah. they, were also, they were also used by famous riders such as Mario Cipollini, who rode them to loads of really cool victories. They are very cool wheels. It had a carbon blade, and the blade was bonded onto the hub and the rim to make the wheel. But after a number of reported failures, later versions of the wheels had um, a rivet to make it stronger. But in 2001, the you-know-who banned the wheel. The um, fun police, the UCI. Yes, they did, um, because they had new testing protocols for wheels, which they just didn't pass. Oh, it's such a shame, isn't it? Do you know what, I think, I love these wheels so much, I think we should You have do, don't you? So over on the GCN app, I want to know whether wheels such as the Spinergy Revex should be allowed by the UCI again, and I just want to know if everyone agrees with me, basically. But surely that's just like a, a three-spoke or a five-spoke wheel. Uh, well, yeah, kind of. Okay, look, basically, do you love the Spinergy Revex wheels as as from Alex the does. 90s as much as I do? Head over to the GCN app and hopefully share your thoughts only if you agree with me. Up next, Spokey Dokies. I mean, how cool are Spokey Dokies? I mean, they were that cool, I didn't even have them. What? No, I. I've I feel like I massively, massively missed out. Though. Okay, well, for Manon and anyone else that doesn't know what a spokey dokey is, it's that really small little plastic kind of ball that clipped onto your spokes, and then as you rode along quite slowly, they'd slide up and down the spokes and make a horrific rattling noise. And the faster you went, they kind of just like flung out to the wheel. You get them in loads of different colours. Basically, it was the best way to um, like damage like your wheels, pimp out your bike when you're a kid. 
Do they damage your wheels? No, it doesn't damage your wheels. Uh, were they banned by the UCI though? Um, they probably would be banned by the UCI. Actually, I'd imagine they are because yeah. they count as a like removable object on your wheel. Yeah, they do. Um, but anyway, just to clarify how cool they are, here's an amazing picture of me as a kid with spoky dokies on my bike. But also, there's a picture of Manon on a best bike, I presume, at the time. Yeah. <laughs> So 1990 saw the release of the STI shifter by Shimano, which stands for Shimano's Total Integration, and it combined changing gear and braking into one handy little unit, which was on your handlebars. It meant riders were far safer when they were racing, they didn't have to take hands off the bars to change gear, and importantly, it gave Shimano-equipped riders a significant advantage over non-Shimano-equipped riders in races. That's just cool, isn't it? And also, nine years later, the group set other people, Winner 5 was updated to 9 speed. What? And the final mention this week from the 90s tech goes to the Kestrel 500 SCI, the first modern frame to have a seat tubeless design. Needless to say, this bike was banned by the UCI for not meeting its bike regulations. And after doing a little bit of research online to find out a little bit of history about the bike, I came across quite a common theme, and that was lots of people saying that at high speeds, the bike was particularly unstable. That's not what you want, is it? It's definitely not <laughs> what you want at high speeds, and I think it's partly down to the fact it was designed around the slightly smaller 650B wheels. So what we're saying is most of the tech from the 90s has been banned by the ECI. A lot of it, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so those are some of the bits of tech that me and Alex have picked out from the 90s, a far from comprehensive list, but it's been fun. Yeah. But if you're sitting there shouting at us, saying that we've missed a crucial bit of tech out, chill out, yeah. don't, don't shout, calm yeah. down, just leave it in the comment section below, let us know what it is. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see what people pick out. Yeah, probably, There's probably lots of things. Probably better stuff than us. So now time for hot and spicy tech. Starting off this week, Cell Italia have released a brand new saddle. It's called the Model X Green Comfort Plus, and it's produced using similar innovative process to the Model X Green Superflow, which is a saddle that I took a closer look at earlier this year. It is produced using a fully automated process, uses no glue, and it is constructed and produced entirely in Italy to help reduce the shipping CO2. It's also made with 100% sustainable material, and the Comfort Plus also has more of the total gel cover to help with comfort, so focusing on riders who aren't looking to race. Yeah, it weighs in at 415 grams, it's got FEC alloy rails, and a neat little sort of additional feature which I spotted is that that Total Gel cover has a special antibacterial coating. Ooh, that's quite clever. That is pretty cool, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Up next, we've got a new bike from Vast, and it's called the E1, and they describe it as an advanced multi-purpose adventure urban e-bike. That is a mouthful. Yeah, well, it might sound very complicated, but in essence, it's a very versatile e-bike. There is a load going on with this bike. So instead of you guys searching through the list, we thought we'd share some of the best bits about this bike with you. Starting with the Bosch Performance CX Line motor and a 500 watt hour battery, which is hidden inside the seat tube. Speaking of which, the saddle height, which I've spotted, is really cool how you adjust it, so you don't need to use any tools whatsoever. There's just a sort of spring-loaded clip, press it in with one hand, adjust that, and it's got corresponding or notches, which it all slots into. Super easy. They also have the Nail React, which is a suspension system, and it uses air shocks, so you can finely tune your ride depending on what terrain or suspension you want, which is great if you're doing that big food shop. So this bike has a huge load capacity, like say if you're doing your, doing your big shop maybe, and it's the first bike to suspend the rider, the drive system, and the cargo using that nailed, nailed React suspension system, which is great for riding over rough terrain and make sure you've got a really smooth, comfortable ride. It does look pretty cool. There's three bike options to choose from here. Each has got a different drivetrain system. Two of them use a belt drive, so we've got that Gates carbon drive system, and then internal rear hub gears, so we've got the MVOLO system and also the Rolf internal geared hub. And then the third option is your sort of traditional chain and cassette drivetrain system, and that uses 12-speed gears with Shimano XT and SLX. The bike is available from October, and it also has a kickstand. Oh, Boom. Love it. 
Next up, Whoop have released the new Whoop 4.0 and it's said to be the most advanced wearable technology out there. It basically syncs all the data from the wristband onto your phone for clear data and metrics. Now some of the differences over the old previous model are the fact that it now includes a SpO2 sensor, which is a blood oxygen monitoring sensor. The unit itself is now 33% smaller. It still has a five day battery life. But what's quite interesting is the small charge in a battery pack that allows you to charge the, the strap up when you're out, on, out and about on the go is now waterproof. So you can wear it in the shower, for example, or if you're swimming, it also includes a skin temperature sensor and get this right, one of the big changes across the Whoop range, including the Whoop 4.0, is that it's now a different piece of wearable tech. So you can put it in lots of different positions on the body rather than just being stuck having it on your wrist. So it includes a range of clothing. We've got things like leggings, t-shirts, and there's also the Whoop Intimate range, which includes a sports bra for women and some boxer shorts for men, where you can position the sensor inside the garment itself, sort of where your sort of heart rate monitor would normally sit. Next up, some new tyres from American Classic Tyres. Now, these are called the Aggregate and they come in a 700C and a 40 and 50 millimetre width. So these have got quite a closely spaced together tread pattern, maybe ideally suited for drier conditions and dusty terrains. But something that caught my eye when reading up about these tyres is they do something called the Road Hazard Protection Scheme, I think it's called. Basically, if you're out riding and you cut and damage your tyre so it's not suitable to be used anymore, They'll give you a new one at half price. That's quite good, actually. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, really yeah, like that. That. Hey, Manon, do you like having super cool carbon fibre parts on your bike? Yeah, obvs. Who doesn't? Uh, well, what do you make of these carbon disc brake rotors from Carbon Tie? Yeah, they're pretty cool and lightweight. For one of them, it is 77 grams. That is pretty light. That so is. a Durace one comes in at 108 grams for just a 160 mil rotor. So while carbon fibre is maybe great for lots of stuff on our bikes, Maybe not so suited to our disc brakes, for example, mm. because I've done a bit of research and carbon fibre is 40 times less conductive of heat than aluminium and oh. 10 times less conductive than steel. You have done your research, haven't you? I have done my research. And the final bit of hot tech this week, we just wanted to give a shout out to the GCN shop because they've got a nice little sale on, up to 50% off these lovely t-shirts. So Pretty if you cool. fancy uh, getting some early Christmas presents in, being organised, or maybe just treat yourself. Yeah, maybe head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, pick out some of the goods, maybe even treat yourself to a little arse saver mug guard, because yeah. winter's coming, isn't it? Yeah, hmm. unfortunately. Now we're in Germany this week, so I've got a, uh, a pretzel roll with salami, cheese, lettuce, and tomato. Lovely. Very nice. It's now time for screw round upgrades by upgrades, where you submit photo evidence of upgrades that you've made to your bikes or cycling knives for a chance to win the ultimate prize. GCM water bottle. Fantastic. <laughs> um, let's take a look at last week's results. So we had D. Banbury's Bianchi Super Record upgrade up against Campi underscore riders, Merck's Campagnolo to Shimano swap. And um, that was a little bit controversial. It raised a few eyebrows in the Did comments it? section, so, shall we say, with many people firstly claiming that going from Campagnolo to Shimano was a downgrade, and also yeah. many people, which I quite like, called it a side grade. Side grade? Yeah, I so like just, that. He's just moved across. He's not gained, he's not, not gained anything, not worse off. Just moved to the side. Side grade. Side hmm. grade is staying, that's... <laughs> Maybe that should be a second option. <laughs> yes. Um, a third option, sorry. But anyway, um, D. Banbury, took the win, 65% of the votes. Nice uh, so get in touch over on Facebook and we'll get the water special. bottle. Oh, I nearly forgot, water bottle out to you. Hmm. Coming up this week, right. what have we got? You start us off. First one is from Alistair P. And after borrowing his dad's gravel bike for an adventure late last year, he wanted one of his own. Just fell in love with gravel, mm. like we all do. Without much money, um, I set about trying to build one for cheap. I found a tired, TCX frame for $200, stripped it, painted it, and found a suitably awesome Lamborghini paint code. Cleared the forks, color match it, and color match the stem, and a friend sold him everything else he needed for the bike. Wow. I think the paint, the paint is really cool, actually. It, I like it looks like a very high standard paint job, I have to say. To <laughs> Moving on, because as it. Ollie likes to say, it's not going to be plain sailing, it's so who are they sailing. up against? And this is Raw Doe 30. Built up a few bikes prior to this one, 
uh, but they bought the bike second hand, which was fairly neglected and barely rideable, cleaned it up, polished the frame, touched up the paint as best as they could, set up um, three by nine with a mixed group set with Shimano 105, group set of the people. We've got carbon seat posts, forks, bars, Mavic Cassirian wheels, basically, they're really happy with how the bike has turned Just out. Just basically gave it some good old TLC. That's what upgrades are all about. Yeah, it is. And it looks brand spanking new, I have yeah, to say. It does. done a very good job there. Yeah. That's bike fault worthy too. Uh, Tiny bit of chimney, but we can let that go. Yeah, there is quite a lot going on for this. Both yeah. very worthy upgrades, but it's not down to us, is it? It's no. down to the viewers at home. So head over to the GCN app and um, just click on which upgrade you like the best. It's now time for the Bike Vault. Oh, it's my favourite part of the show, and of course... My favourite part. The Bike Vault Queen is back. So this is where you upload pictures of your bikes into the GCN app. Then we judge them to be either nice or super nice. If they're super nice, Manon rings the bell. I ring it. Right, first one this week is in from Slop Chest. Fair. The paint scheme is amazing. Um, cranks aligned. I looked at that and I was like, why is that bottle cage so high? And then there's two. Two. That would triple. Oh, God. Stay hydrated. A bottle cage um, trio. The only thing I can actually see is the valve. Like, I valve can't... is not quite right, is it? I can't see the second. Oh, there's a second valve. It... Oh. The saddle is at a very bizarre angle. Um, Whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think I'll go super yeah, awesome. Yeah. I, I like think, it. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Oh, you're a bit, bit oh. rusty on the bell there, aren't you? Oh, I haven't done it for a few it's weeks. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next up, um, Turd Tur J Brot 73. God, I'm really not good at the names when Ollie's not here, to yeah. help me out. Um, with what bike have they got? A Colnago C64 is from that a, 2018. Is that, what's this in the background? Can we not? Oh, the, do you know what that is? That's one what's of those like? massive ski jumps. Oh, ski. Oh, like Eddie the Eagle. No. You can't reference the ski jump to Eddie the Eagle. That's the ski jump that Primoz Roglic would have done before oh, he was really? a famous cyclist. Oh. Yeah, that's that's what he did before in his in his previous life. Um, anyway, we need to judge the bike. Right, bike. Unfortunately, mm. it's very precariously lent against a rock. That which gives is me a little bit of anxiety. Ready to scratch the hell yeah. out of the frame. I don't like that. The cranks aren't aligned. Um, the tan sidewall tire on the back quite nice. is very dirty. It is very dirty, actually. The front one's all right. The bike is a lovely bike. Unfortunately, I just think it's not very yeah. well presented. Nice. It's just a nice. Could be better. Mm. Um, next up. A Jamis Zenith. Zenith? Zenith? Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Um, I mean, first impressions are quite good. I like the um, colours, although I'm a big fan of that sort of fluoro. You do colour. like fluoro, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I love um, the fact that everyone else hates that I like it as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, we have got a gold chain. Do you think the gold chain on the fluoro is a little bit of a clash? Nope, absolutely not. I think it's a bit of a clash. The <laughs> okay. chim ch got a tiny chimney, but I can let that go. Yeah. Uh, the light's on, but that's okay. It's quite minimalistic. Everything's Vows lined are up. Aligned. Yeah, Pirelli logos, the zip. I nice. think it's going to have to be a super nice. I think it's a super nice too. Go on, ring I the mean, bell. just because it's fluoro, but. Next up, um, Harmonious. We're really struggling with the names today, aren't we? Are we? I don't know. I can't pronounce anyone's name. I do apologise if anyone's offended. Ooh, Canyon Air is... Road from 2019 with a selection of sheep in the background. Hey, this is real similar to the one you have. I thought you could say the sheep then. <laughs> you, unless you, you don't own any sheep, do you? Well, I come from a sheep farm, I do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, um, it is very similar. I've got rim brake though. Oh, yeah. Save the rim brakes. Um, valves are. I can't see the front valve. It's not aligned. It's in the correct gear. The cranks are aligned. We've got the saddlebag on, the bottles on. Um, Again, I'm not sure about the whole leaning on rock situation. Yeah, why is everyone leaning their bikes on? Well, I guess there's not much to lean on there, is yeah, there? Yeah, but head over to shop.globalcyclenetwork and you can just get yourself a shadow stand and it will help your bike vault submissions no end. Yeah, Unfortunately, for me, this one is going to be a nice, I'm slightly outraged on how many rocks we've got. Yeah, I guess I'll go nice too. Okay, right, next in is oh, another incredibly difficult username. <laughs> I'll say it as best as I can. 5FQ2MBDJ7F, all in lowercase. I mean, it's a nice from me. Dogma F12. Far too far away to be oh able to see anything. Oh my goodness me. It's facing the wrong way. We've got, right, you're clearly on a bit of a bike packing bike adventure, which is fine, but there is a lot going on. Our saver, nice. 
a lot of, of bags and equipment go on there. At least just turn it the other way so we can see, see the yeah, drive. Unfortunately, yeah. there's a lot going on with this picture and that isn't in a good sense. Yeah. So it's a nice from both of us. Oh. What have we got here? Who's it from? Um, it is from No... No Stromo? No Stro Stromo? Um, jaunty I mean, angle, Ollie would go absolutely nuts at this jaunty that angle. That wall is the perfect wall to have a nice bike for picture. <laughs> like, yeah. could have just done a straight on. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, I can't see anything about the rear wheel, it's just going to be a nice. Yeah. That was, unfortunately, the last it bike was. vault in the bike vault for this week, which means we're going to have to end the show. Um, quite sad. disappointing, really. Yeah. Hope you've enjoyed the show. If you have, please let us know in the comments section down below. And remember, let us know about the 90s tech if you've got anything that you felt like we missed off of yeah. our list. What was your favourite bit of mm. 90s tech? Um, I guess we'll see you next week. Yeah, might not see, see you next week. No, Ollie might be back from mm. his adventures, so see you next yeah. time. See ya.